This is Weights and Wealth, your one-stop shop for entertaining education on building a stronger body and bank account. We are not doctors or financial advisors, and must warn you, this is not medical or investing advice. It is for your entertainment. All right, welcome back to Weights and Wealth. Soggy Sock Gang here. We're going to be talking to you about the rules of health and wealth and playing the game today. All coming to you when, is, when is this floor not going to be wet? Can we stop spilling it is, liquids? It is permanently wet now. <laughs> the ground is thirsty. Needs water. All right. Um, yeah. We, so, we got a shout out here or do you yeah, want to do it? Yeah, we got uh, Anthony from Columbus, Ohio. Longtime listener who likes to share the podcast with his friends. Uh, thank you for doing that. You know, sharing is the easiest way for us to grow um, because most of us don't have the spare cash to throw into Facebook and, you know, advertising in a proper manner. So the more you share it on your story, the more you send it to your friends, even if it's just to make fun of us, go for it. Yeah. And you could win the raffle for the gift cards that we do every month if you share, comment, uh, whatever. If you're like and subscribe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you share it with a friend through text or something, just choose a DM. Let us know, and we'll we'll give you a raffle entry. Yeah, okay. we do need your credit card information to make it go through, though. <laughs> the weight's wisdom of the week is to do a unilateral block if you never really do unilateral exercises. Unilateral is when you're doing something with one leg or one arm using one side of your body. Common examples of this would be uh, a Bulgarian split squat or uh, like alternating single arm overhead presses with dumbbells or kettlebells. Have you guys ever done like a big dive into a unilateral focus? Um, when I was working my way up to four plates on squat, I, uh, I did a lot of Bulgarians um, starting off with high reps like that if you want to make like progress on anything treat it like you do a barbell movement like even if it's step ups or like even like freaking curls like if you want if you want to make progress go like 15 12 10 8 6 like work your way down into those heavier weights and you will see a lot of progress as just one thing that's held true no matter what I'm doing, whether it's rows, bench, squat, anything. And Bulgarians in particular will extend your squat through the roof. Yeah. Unilateral exercises are really good for evening out imbalances, which can then help you be stronger with both arms or both legs. Uh, and also increasing your stability, which will help make you a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to the intro article for today, we found an article on Science Daily uh, it comes from Boston University uh, School of Medicine, and they identified what they call obesogens, which are these compounds or chemicals um, that may impact your insulin sensitivity or uh, your leptin and ghrelin levels. These are hormones that uh, signal for hunger and satiety for your appetite. Uh, so they're saying that these different obesogens, these different compounds that or toxins that are found pretty much everywhere now are what are contributing to people gaining weight. I mean, there's plenty of other things that are contributing, like, you know, a little bit of self-control would be good. But, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of when, when you start manufacturing food, you're going to have some weird side effects. You know, I mean, just. If it comes out of a factory, if it's man-made, you probably shouldn't put it in your body. Yeah, a lot of the obesogens that uh, Boston University School of Medicine found were chemicals that were uh, side effects of like manufacturing, yeah, industrial not food, byproduct. but yeah, industrial byproducts um, or even coming from like fertilizers and stuff like that. So uh, I think like a bigger problem that we're really seeing rear its head right now in America is just all the toxins that are everywhere. Uh, we've talked about this before with how RFK is the only candidate that's made that part of his platform. He's trying to clean up uh, some of these toxins that are that are everywhere. Um, but if you if you get too deep into it and you try to make everything in your life toxin free, 
it just becomes like a more stressful thing if you go down the rabbit hole on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you guys? Yeah, well, because then you kind of figure out that everything's going to kill you. Everything's toxic. And then, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything gives you cancer, so lean into it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was just talking to my dad about this the other day about just like water. Like, you know, do you get like... Oh, like a plastic water bottle that like doesn't have fluoride and has like minerals and all that in it or do you drink the tap or because Brita doesn't f- filter out fluoride and I, I know you have the Berkey yeah the Berkey's good um, but I mean even we were we were going through this the other day uh, Sean and his wife were over uh, at our house over this was back a while ago actually yeah. was during Christmas break yeah. and you had a life straw yeah. Which you thought filtered everything, including fluoride. And then gets, my mom went online and... It gets like microplastics and a lot of the chemicals, but it doesn't get fluoride. Yeah. My mom went online because she was like, oh, maybe I should get one. And then I think she emailed them or looked on their website and found out that the Life Straw doesn't take fluoride out. Yeah. But I mean, it's just one of those things like, at what point are you stressing too much about yeah. the toxins and... I mean, what we do is we have uh, like a large three gallon stainless one that does take out fluoride and like lead and all that stuff. And then you fill up your life straw with that stuff that's been filtered again. And then it goes through that second filter and gets out pretty much anything else that's going to be crappy in there. So I think that's a pretty solid way of doing it. It's pretty easy. You know, you fill it up every couple days and then you can just fill up your water bottle with it and you're set and uh you know just having being having the ability to have filter on a move even if you're not necessarily getting everything out you're still getting a large chunk of these carcinogens and i'm sure that there's plenty of these obesogens and all sorts of other nasty chemicals in the average uh you know tap or water or water fountain that you go to and like at your workplace and stuff so the ability to have a mobile filter like that i highly recommend any type of uh life straw water bottle yeah and i think it's just sponsor about us <laughs> they, i think it's just about doing like the easy things right having some sort of filter system whether it's a life straw or like a filter installed under your sink or a berkey on the counter like there's lots of different options at least try to do something um, and then like don't microwave your food in a plastic container like the easy things that you can take control of take control of those and the rest just worry about getting sleep and then proper nutrition and yeah, i mean out. you really have like two options you either go for all the cancers and just keep them guessing which one you're going to get <laughs> or or you just try and mitigate it and then you end up only getting one kind <laughs> at this rate that's kind of our choice <laughs> Uh, something that we came across when we were listening to Patrick Bet David's podcast, um, they're, they're talking about how a lot of people, they're going over some stats from like millennials and Gen Z, and they were talking about how everyone's looking for the way to like get rich quick or easiest way to get a six pack or uh, some other ones, fastest easiest side hustle with the least amount of work, like all these things, people are always trying to like find all these shortcuts to everything when the real answer is to just put the work in consistently over time. Or like steroids or trend stuff like that. You don't need it. You really don't need any of these things. Yeah. Like just do the basics right and make that 1% every single day and you will eventually get to where you want to be. Yeah, I feel by like the time you get to where you want to be, you're probably going to have set a second, third, higher goal. So you'll never really be satisfied if you're actually ambitious and you're not just lazy and like looking for an easy way out of whatever crummy situation you're in. More importantly, is like the process of who you become in the pursuit of that, with the consistency and the discipline. If you're like consistently figuring out how to slowly add income streams, then you're going to learn how to properly budget, right? You're going to learn all these things. Whereas if you're just trying to like find the fastest shortcut, all right, maybe you actually do get successful with a shortcut, but chances are very slow, very small. And you're probably going to waste a bunch of your time yeah. and not make any progress and not improve in your pursuits at all. I mean, even, even just budgeting properly can be looked at as a second income stream because 
if you figure out how to budget right and you're cutting out all these extraneous unnecessary expenses that you're just blowing money on, all right, now you've got another $100 a week that can go into investing or can go into your savings, stuff like that. So just clean up your act and you'll probably find a couple bones somewhere, you know? Yeah. And like, and like a lot of these things to, to get rich fast, you know, either everybody would be doing it or it's not actually that profitable, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because at one point, like things like drop shipping, like people were making like good money off of that. But now it's just, it's like by, by the time something's popularized and everybody knows about it, that's mm-hmm. when it's, you know, not very profitable anymore. Yeah. Blue oceans. Blue oceans. Blue oceans. <laughs> the one of the best blue oceans is during the gold rush, people started selling denim and the people that started selling denim out in California made a lot more money than the people trying to get rich quick mm, off of gold. finding, finding gold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just think that's hilarious, but mm-hmm. yeah. Mr. Levi. All yeah, right. What it boils down to is simply do the work, do it right. Yeah. And be consistent. you'll get there. Yeah. It's a process, but mm-hmm. all right. Today's topic is learning how to play the game of weights and wealth, uh, which follows up pretty nicely after that little uh, talk on just being okay with something taking a long time to slowly improve and compounding over time, getting better and better. Um, But I guess we'll start with the wealth side. What are some of the games that you need to learn how to play when it comes to investing and wealth creation? Yeah, well, I like. I mean, the goal is to eventually become an investor or or a business owner because the tax code is pretty much written for investors and business owners. Um, you know, just as a salaried employee, it's kind of hard to reduce your your income and pay fewer taxes, and you're also taxed at a higher rate. Um, I, I mean, like we've talked about, like you have your four hundred one k IRA HSA. But beyond that, there really isn't too much you can do. Um, so the so so investors are taxed at preferential rates, um, dividends, and long term capital gains. They're they're taxed at fifteen percent for for most people. Between I think it's like forty five and almost five hundred thousand dollars, you're taxed at just fifteen percent. Um, and then also for people who who start a business, who who start like a C corporation. And it grows very quickly. There are there's there's a bunch of rules. Like you have to have a five year holding period, um, and it has to be like the original class of stock. But you pay zero percent tax on your first ten ten million dollars of gains, which is huge for like a lot of the people who are in tech and their 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 startup blows up. They can make a, a lot of money very quickly. So learning how to play the game is figuring out how to become in some way an investor or. A business owner of some sort. You can mm-hmm. invest in weights and wealth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll yeah. take your money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or your skills yeah. of your video yeah. editor. Please contact <laughs> us. We need one of those. Yes. <laughs> um, but then, you know, even as like a business owner, you get to take a lot of deductions that people who work a salary job don't don't get to take. I mean, you can deduct part of your home for, for your office. You can deduct part of your car, um, any supplies or anything like that used in your business. You get to deduct and you, and then you pay tax on that lower amount. Hmm. Um, okay. So sense. for for most people, if they're figuring out how to play the game of taxes and trying to lower the amount they get taxed on uh, deductions and such, mm-hmm. Is that something that people are going to be able to do if they log on to TurboTax or QuickBooks two days before tax no. season's over? Or do they need to actually have an account that will do that, those kinds of things for them? Yeah. I mean, if, if, someone, if, if someone has their own business or like a rental or something like that, it's definitely advantageous to have an accountant because they know how to do it properly and can maximize your, your uh, write-offs. Um, and also... Once, once you're looking at it after the fact, you can't really get it down much further. Um, that's more tax planning that you have to do during the year. Gotcha. So a good idea. We talk all the time about maybe it's a good idea to get a personal trainer in some cases. In a lot of cases, it might be a good idea for someone to get an accountant if they mm-hmm. have a small business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to do it themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you'll have less liability then and you'll just have a lot more comfort knowing that it's being done correctly. 
because I have seen self-prepared tax returns before for businesses and they're not good. Guilty. <laughs> I mean, sometimes like this, like, I've seen like real estate and S corps and that's like a huge no, no, because to, to get the real estate out of the S corp, you pay huge gains on it. So it's just stuff like that, that, that a CPA would know and yeah. to not do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as, as a small business owner, like that's just one more, operation that you would have to spend a ton of time learning how to maybe try to do properly whereas mm-hmm. you could just have someone do it for you that knows how to do it properly mm-hmm. exactly i don't think we've talked before about if it makes sense to hire an accountant or not on this show yeah i mean i don't think we have uh, like pretty much if you have a business or a rental or you're invested in partnerships even as like a passive owner, I think it would make sense to hire an accountant because that's when it starts to get more complicated and TurboTax just won't be able to do it as well because um, you kind of ha- have to know what what you're doing. Um, but I mean, for your average person who just has, you know, some bank interest, maybe a few stock sales and then a W-2, that's fine to sell to a pair. Yeah, that would make sense. But yeah, I mean, moving on and, you know, talking about... Uh playing the game with the weights and food side of this, you know, it seems like doing the normal thing, which is fine in finance, you know, like buying spy is good, you know, saving 10 to 20% of your income is good. In America, do not be normal when it comes to diet. Yeah, absolutely. And exercise, please, please, please do not. (laughs) It's, yeah, it's, you're going to be a train wreck. If you follow the norm, uh, as far as, health goes you're probably going to wind up fat sick and unhealthy because yeah. that, that's at this point where almost majority of americans are mm-hmm. um, so when it comes to playing the game on the weight side of things uh, i think one of the most important things is learning how to cook is is probably it's just paramount i mean if you when people are when all your friends are going out to eat and everything uh, if you can learn how to like sometimes eat meals beforehand or um, bring your own food if depending on I mean obviously if you're going out to a restaurant you're not going to bring your own food but I like, mean you could <laughs> I've always wanted to do that walk into a five star restaurant order an appetizer and then bring out a briefcase with a bunch of like Subway sandwiches <laughs> I think that'd be funny but like if, if you're going to like some sort of neighborhood party or something like say you're going to a block party and everything there is going to be low in protein and high in calories, right? Well, you can just bring your own food. Like that, that's not an issue and it's going to stuff like that compounds over time. Right. So, um, just don't be afraid to be someone that brings your own food places, bring your lunch to work, you know, like start to limit the amount of times that you're eating out and eating processed food with other people just because everyone else is doing it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be different. I mean, it's, and it's not like, like most of the time, if you do learn to cook, which is very easy to do, don't learn to cook like Ted because you will have spices all over the place. It's, it's kind of terrifying. You'd probably be sneezing. I have to clean every time I cook. Sneezing cayenne (laughs) for the next three weeks uh, when you try and take a nap. Um, But it's very easy. You'll feel better. You'll look better. You'll think better. Like everything improves when you control what you put into your body. And if you leave it up to other people, they're going to bring you down to their level. Mm-hmm. And the last thing you want to be is average. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you just have to understand that the normal food system is rigged against you, right? Like all these processed foods are engineered to be hyper palatable so that you eat as much of them as possible, right? Like classic example that Sal from Mind Pump, potential future guest. Potential future guest Sal from Mind Pump. (laughs) Always uses is, (laughs) is like the amount of potatoes in a bag of Lay's potato chips, two or three potatoes. No one sits down and eats like two or three potatoes. Well, (laughs) most, most people would sit down and eat like two or three potatoes, but you put it in a bag of chips and people can crush it you know so um like oh, yeah. these foods are these processed foods are engineered gains. <laughs> <laughs> they're engineered in texture and taste and smell and look like everything to just 
be as hyper palatable as possible. And that's going to take advantage over your brain if you let it. So you just got to figure out ways to limit it. My wife's cousin is actually a food scientist. Really? Yeah. It might be interesting to talk to her. Potential future guest. Potential future guest. (laughs) 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 Yes. Yes. Um, But yeah, I mean, efficiency and speed can be prioritized by a lot of people over this home cooking. So that's like an obstacle people run into. Like Nick, for example, like it's a pain in the butt. You know, you, you get back from work and you're like, shoot, I got to cook lunch for the next three days. It's the last thing you want to do after you get home from work. You've already been to the gym. You've already done everything you need to do today. And now you need to unfrost, you know, two and a half pounds of chicken because you forgot to do it in the morning when you got up and it, it's always worth it. It is always worth it. It's just a little bit of extra work. Yeah. You might have to be on your feet for another hour or so, but the time you save on the next couple of days and the money you'll save and the benefits to your health, mental health, physical health, I mean, spiritual health, who knows? I'd say McDonald's can be demonic. No. <laughs> Please don't sue us. No. <laughs> Another thing with like the chips being stacked against you is if you're just uh, eating... Lay's chips? <laughs> if you're just eating the normal food that everyone else eats, you're getting a lot of glyphosate because all the mm-hmm. crops are sprayed with glyphosate. Oh, yeah. So uh, glyphosate is basically the active ingredient in Roundup, like weed killer, right, from Monsanto. So... Met a guy in the ski lift who works for Monsanto. Yeah. He's like, I feel kind of eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't worry about it, dude. <laughs> but glyphosate is toxic. So uh, especially to your gut, this is where uh, leaky gut they've found out has, is, is coming from. Uh, not all the time, but it's one of the contributors to leaky gut. Um, the Western medicine rejected leaky gut as a real thing 20 it years ago. Kind right? of a funny term though. It is a funny term. So now, now the Western medicine community calls it uh, intestinal hyperpermeability. But um, this is going to have, I mean, your, your gut controls everything else in your body. It's your second brain. It affects your skin. Uh, it affects a bunch of your neurotransmitters are produced in the gut, 95% of your serotonin. So uh, if you're destroying your gut, you're going to wind up with so many health problems. So if you can avoid glyphosate when possible and eat organic, it's, it's going to be really good for you down the road. Um, so it's just life is just another way that the cards are really stacked against you if you're not being cautious about what you're eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, like people talk a lot about like, oh, well, what is the most effective way to like achieve my goals? And is it is it calories in, calories out? Um, is it macro counting? And like from my experience and from what like research has shown – Calories in, calories out matters if you are simply trying to gain or lose weight. Let's say you're just an overweight dude who wants to slim down and lose a couple of pounds so you can fit into a 34-inch waist instead of a 38. You know, then you just, just calories in, calories out, and you'll eventually drop pounds. Like that's it goes for guys who are trying to gain weight too. You know, like the human body is a machine. And all those people who say like oh, I can't gain weight. I eat so much. I can't gain weight. I No, you're not eating enough. You just don't know your resting metabolic rate and you're probably just eating a crap ton of McDonald's before you go to bed at night and that's it. You know, like you're not actually feeding yourself the amount of calories you need. But if what you care about is body composition and actually like building muscle or like dropping fat, and like maintaining muscle or even building muscle and dropping fat, which I would argue can be possible, you're going to want to count your macros. And most people will think like, oh, that's way too much work. But trust me, like it's like learning like the value of currency. You know, it's like when you were a kid, you always forget how much is a nickel. But, you know... Maybe it was only me. Maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's like, it's like all these different foods, like they all have different values. Yeah. And so once you figure out what 100 grams of potatoes is and 100 grams of rice and 100 grams of steak versus 100 grams of chicken, it makes it so much easier. And all you do is you throw it all in the Tupperware while it's on the scale, do a couple quick maths, and boom, you know exactly 
by macronutrient what is going into your body. The only danger with that is sometimes you can become hyper-focused and neglect micronutrients, which yeah, and like, can, can affect that. But count, counting macros for and, building muscle, counting macros, I would argue, is far superior to counting calories. Yeah, counting macros and counting calories is a really good starting point. And for most people, it's going to be really effective if they just have the discipline to do it. And it's really not that hard with the apps that they have out there, like yeah. my fitness pal or life sum or some other ones. Um, but then also for some, some people might say, well, I tried that and I wasn't able to lose weight. And then in that case, well, it's not that calories in calories out doesn't work. It's that, uh, your, your equation has other variables in it, right? right? Like it's not just calories in and calories out. There's all these different variables that affect both of those numbers, right? So what are your hormones like? If you're a male and your mm -hmm. testosterone is under 400, well, you're not going to burn as many calories, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to shift the calories out number, right? And uh, the, there's just all these different variables that can affect calories in and calories out, especially variables that are happening inside your body that you might not be able to see, such as with your hormones or your gut health. So uh, if you've tried calories in, calories out, and you say, hey, it didn't work for me, um, that's a point in time where you should maybe get some blood work done, see if you have any nutrient deficiencies. Those can affect uh, your metabolism. And then um, from there, you can try a more whole food approach and patch any deficiencies that you might have. And then your body might run more optimally. And then your metabolism might work, I guess, better. Um, uh, that's really a valid term. More but, efficiently. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, from there then calories in, calories out, or macros would work for you. Um, so, yeah, but, like, don't be afraid to be that person that counts macros. Again, like, being different than the norm is okay, right? If you're going out somewhere, you can take a quick note on your phone of, like, if, if you take a food journal in your notes app or if you're counting macros on a macro counting app, like, it's okay to jot that down when you go to eat somewhere. Uh, 100%. You can... You can be that person. You can be different. If it's if it's in line with your goals, don't be afraid yeah. to be a little different. <laughs> oh, Paul, this is a tough episode. Yeah, it is. is. I think it is like 1 30 or 2 a.m. Yeah, here. We uh, <laughs> we record these all in chunks, so I think this is our seventh one in a row here. So apologize if this episode was not up to par, but tomorrow morning we're gonna get back at it. <laughs> oh yeah. With some quality episodes. Mm -hmm. Lots of coffee. Yes, lots of coffee. Uh, uh, to start our day in four hours. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us today at Weights and Wealth. And don't forget to apply today's lessons to live healthy and wealthy. If this conversation will contribute to your fitness and financial gains, please share it with a friend or family member and give a five-star review so more people can lift bigger weights and get bigger bank accounts.